Hello students, I am Rehmat Khan from Shiv Jyoti Educational Group and today we are going to start with the first chapter of Geography, Resources and Development. Topics to be covered, what are resources, classification of resources, development of resources, land resources and at the end we will talk about soil resources. So let us start. Resources everything available in our environment which can be used to satisfy our needs provided it is technologically accessible economically feasible and culturally acceptable can be termed as a resource to understand this definition let's take an example everything in our environment that can be used for benefit provided it should fulfill three conditions the first one technologically accessible to understand you can look at this picture we can see there is coal here beneath the school now to extract that coal we need technology and if we have it we can extract if we don't have we cannot so we have the technology to extract the coal Secondly, economically feasible. When I say economically feasible, that means the cost of that coal should not be higher than the cost of extraction. To understand, I will give you an example. Imagine this whole coal which is beneath the school is of 50,000 rupees and the cost of extraction is 1 lakh. So, there is no meaning in extraction of this coal. Third, culturally acceptable. As we can see in this picture, the coal lies beneath the school. If we want to extract this coal, first of all, we need to demolish the school. Do you think the people will allow of this area to demolish the school? If the people of that particular area allow that that is called culturally acceptable if not that is not culturally acceptable classification of resources natural resources when we talk about natural resources these are the gifts of nature we can see all around fish plants forest agricultural lands animals minerals etc. Furthermore, let's talk about types of resources. On the basis of origin, we can classify this as biotic resources and abiotic resources. When I say biotic resources, it means all the resources which have life. Example, fish, plants, human beings, Herbatic resources are those resources which don't have life. Example, stone, soil, etc. On the basis of exhaustibility, we can classify the resources as renewable resource and non-renewable resources. Renewable resources are those resources which can be used again and again and they don't harm the environment. That is, they don't pollute the environment and they are available in plenty solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy when I talk about non-renewable resources these are the resources which are not available in plenty we have to use these resources properly because these resources take millions of years to form back and if they are used once some of them cannot be used again for example coal petroleum they can be just used once on the basis of ownership we can classify the resources as individual resource community owned resources national resources international resources individual resources are those resources which is owned by a particular person for example house private land or well in that particular house community owned resources 
where the community is the whole owner a group of people of that community belong for example graveyard pond parks and community marriage hall etc national resources is the property of the nation wildlife century bird century rivers railways forest etc international resources are those resources which are within the exclusive economic zone when i say exclusive economic zone that means not beyond the 200 nautical miles from the baseline 200 nautical miles but if i want to extract the resources beyond this zone then i need to take permission of international institutions because this is called international resources on the basis of status of development we have potential resource developed resource stock and reserve development of resources it is a process of developing the resources in order to make them useful for satisfying human wants some resources cannot be used directly through this lines we can understand that resources on their own are nothing that means human interference is important example land has to be cleared and plowed for growing crops water has to be taken to the field to irrigate problems created by indiscriminate use of resources by man many resources got depleted example forest b resources got accumulated in the hands of few people the society is divided into rich and poor third that is c global warming ozone layer depletion environmental degradation are other problems now what is sustainable economic development the economic development which does not damage the environment and at the same time takes care of the needs of the future generation is called sustainable development sustainable development is very important why because many of resources non renewable and exhaustible over exploitation of these resources will affect the needs of our future generation second environmental pollution resource planning now what is resource planning resource planning is a technique or a skill of proper utilization of resources stages of resources planning first identification and listing of resources surveying mapping the measurement of the qualities and quantities of the resources are the important activities undertaken at this stage b planning for exploitation develop a planning structure with suitable technology skill and institutional setup and c match resource development plans with national development plans importance of resource planning it is necessary for the balanced development of india one some regions of india are rich in certain resources and poor in some other resources example rajasthan is poor in water resources but rich in solar and wind energy that's why resource planning is important second some regions are self sufficient while other regions are very poor in important resources example madhya pradesh is rich in many resources but ladakh is poor in resources third waste stage of resources can be avoided by planning fourth environmental pollution can be reduced fifth land degradation land degradation large scale soil erosion caused by running water and wind dumping of waste materials from mining centers and industrial units over irrigation leads to increase in salinity and alkalinity in the soil over grazing by animals and deforestation by man waste water from the industrial units pollute the lands minerals processing like grinding of limestone for cement industry and calcite and soap stone 
for ceramic industry creates a lot of dust and this dust is deposited in the neighboring land. Land conservation measures. Soil erosion can be prevented by ending deforestation, controlling grazing, encouraging afforestation and practicing terrace farming in hilly areas. Preparation of shelter belts of plants and stabilizing of sand dunes by growing thorny bushes will help to prevent land degradation in deserts. Mining activities should be controlled. New technology which reduces wastage can be adopted. Industrial waste should be chemically treated to remove the harmful substances. Because what happens a lot of times, industrialists do? For saving money, they put the waste in such a way. There are machines that can treat it so that it will not reach less money. But they don't do that much money in such a way. Urban waste should be used for production of biogas and bio-manure. In the cities, the waste that is wet and wet, which is wet and wet, we can use it for making biogas and bio-manure. Over irrigation should be stopped. Over irrigation should be stopped. A new method of irrigation should be followed. Soil as a resource. When I say soil, the uppermost layer of the earth crust, which is loose, broken, and useful for plants, is called soil. Soil consists of mineral matters such as sand and clay, and organic matter such as humus, bacteria, and earthworms. Soil is formed mainly due to the process of weathering. As a result, of weathering, a layer of loose rock material is formed on the land surface. If this layer remains undisturbed for a long period of time, chemical, physical and organic changes take place in it. These changes lead to the formation of soil. Factors which influence soil formation process Climate, topography, nature of parent rock and vegetation. Climate decides the rate of weathering and the type of vegetation. Topography of the land decides the accumulation of soil. Nature of parent rock, it decides compositions and texture of the soil. Vegetation decides the amount of humus available in the soil. Let us talk about types of soils. There are six types of soils. Alluvial soil, Red soil, black soil, laterite soil, desert soil, and mountain soil. And the first one is alluvial soil. Alluvial soil is the most fertile and widespread soil found in India. It is formed due to the deposition of fine silt called alluvium by the rivers. It is found in the northern plains, Gujarat plains, and the coastal plains. It consists of sand, silt, and clay. It is divided into Kadar and Bangar, new alluvium and old alluvium. It contains soil nutrients such as potash, phosphoric acid and lime. So it is fertile and good for the growth of sugarcane, rice, wheat and pulses. Black soil, also known as rigor soil. Rigor means cotton, best soil for cotton cultivation. Most of the Deccan is occupied by black soil. High water retaining capacity. Soil is sticky when wet and shrink when dry. Self plying is a characteristic of the black soil as it develops wide cracks when dry. Rich in iron, lime, calcium, potassium, aluminium, and magnesium. Deficient in nitrogen, phosphorus, and organic matter. Color deep black to light black. It is mainly found in the Deccan Trap region of Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Now let's talk about red soil. Seen mainly in low rainfall area, porous, friable structure. Absence of lime, conquer, impure calcium carbonate, deficient in lime, phosphate, manganese, nitrogen, humus and potash. Color, red color due to diffusion of iron in crystalline and metamorphic rocks. The lower layer is reddish, yellow or yellow. Texture, sandy to clay and loamy. Wheat, cotton, pulses, tobacco, oil seeds, potato, etc. are cultivated in this type of soil. It is found in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand. 
laterite soil. Name from Latin word leather, which means brick, eat. Become so soft when wet and so hard when dry. Found in the areas of high temperature and high rainfall. Formed as a result of high leaching due to rainfall. Organic matters of the soil will be removed fast by the bacteria as it is high temperature and humus will be taken quickly by the trees and other plants. Thus, human contents, sorry, humus contents is low. Rich in iron and aluminium, deficient in nitrogen, potash, potassium, lime, humus. Color, red color due to iron oxide. Rice, ragi, sugarcane and cashew nuts are cultivated mainly it is good for the cultivation of tea, coffee, cashew nut. It is found in Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha and Assam. Next we have red soil seen under rain and semi-arid regions. Deposited mainly by wind activities, high salt content, lack of moisture and humus, conquer or impure calcium carbonate content is high which restricts the infiltration of water. Texture sandy, rathiri. Color red to brown found in western Rajasthan. Forest soil. Forest soils are formed in the forest areas where sufficient rainfall is available. The soils vary in structure and texture depending on mountain environment where they are formed. They are loamy and silty on valley sides and coarse green in the upper slopes. In the snow bound areas of Himalayas, they experience generation and are acidic with low humus content. The soil found in the lower valleys are fertile. Soil erosion. Removal of top soil from one place to another by natural agencies is called soil erosion. It is caused by running water and wind. Deforestation, overgrazing, unscientific agriculture practices are responsible for large scale soil erosion. Two types of soil erosion, gully erosion and sheet erosion. Gully erosion, the rainwater when moves down to an uneven landscape, away the soil and form deep channels called gullies. This type of erosion is called gully erosion. A land which is broken into many small parts by the gullies is called bad land. A bad land is unfit for cultivation and for other economic activities. This is an example of gullies. Next is sheet erosion. Sometimes water flow as a sheet over large areas down a slope. The water takes away the top soil. This type of erosion is called sheet erosion. Soil conservation measures. One, contour ploughing. Ploughing along the contour lines can decelerate the flow of water down the slopes. Second, terrace farming. Step can be cut out on the slopes making terrace. Terrace cultivation restricts soil erosion. Strip cropping. Large fields are divided into strips. Strips of grasses are left to grow between the crops. This breaks up the force of the wind. This method is called strip cropping. Shelter bed, planting lines of trees to create shelter. So that's the end of the chapter. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.